Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. You know, with over 800 fishable lakes here in our province, not to mention the thousands of kilometers of rivers and streams, protecting all of this water from invasive species is a monumental task. And that's where partnerships and teamwork comes in, ranging from the government to the University of Alberta to volunteers from one end of the province to the next. Every summer, thousands of Albertans hit the water, fishing, boating, and paddling their way through some of Canada's most iconic lakes and rivers. But beneath the surface, an invisible threat is spreading. Aquatic Invasive Species, or AIS, have the power to drastically alter these ecosystems, and once they take hold, they're nearly impossible to remove. The good news? There's a team of scientists, volunteers, and everyday lake users working together to stop the spread, and their secret weapon is partnership. So we really had to get creative, and it really came down to we need to get our partnerships up. And so we've networked with anyone that will work with us to get monitoring or response work. At the heart of Alberta's AIS prevention strategy is a coordinated effort led by Environment and Protected Areas. Nicole Kimmel is the Aquatic Invasive Species Specialist, and she knows just how high the stakes are. We're looking at probably spending millions of dollars if we were ever to get invasive mussels. We've done the economics, we know what's at stake, and really we need the public to play a role in that prevention as well, because they are you know, moving these species unknowingly, and so that's why we've, we've reinforced through campaigns like Clean Drain Dry. Those are the three simple behaviors all users of water can actually prevent almost all the aquatic invasive species that are being moved around just through those three simple steps. And campaigns like Don't Let It Loose, where we're targeting folks that are releasing things unknowingly or knowingly into water bodies. From checkpoints at border crossings to long-term monitoring programs, Alberta's AIS response depends on collaboration with lake stewards, nonprofits, and university researchers all playing a role. One of the frontline partners is the Alberta Lake Management Society, or ALMS. They monitor dozens of lakes each year for signs of invasive species. Bradley Peter is the executive director, and he says their strategy is built on community science. Yeah, a lot of the lakes in Alberta have watershed stewardship groups, which are these volunteer-run groups aimed at protecting and conserving lake environments. And one of the most immediate threats to the health of lake environments are aquatic invasive species. So a lot of watershed stewardship groups are really active in supporting us in monitoring for those organisms. Environmental DNA allows teams to detect microscopic traces of organisms just from water samples, a powerful early warning system for AIS threats. The environmental DNA sample basically in a simple way is we're just going to pull water. I'll show you by opening this up. We're going to pull water through one of these filters and these filters are they're closed. Um, and there's a there's a piece of nitrocellulose membrane that's inside there that the DNA will bind to. Um, and so we use a, a vacuum pump, which is down here that attaches to the filter and we just pull water through the filter and bind the DNA. Um, and then from a aquatic invasive species perspective, what we're looking for is the DNA from some of the aquatic invasive species that are part of the program. So we can look for um, several different species using an eDNA approach. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into developing and validating those tests. Uh, but the goal here is to try to use this as a tool to complement the existing programs and um, because of the ease at which you can take eDNA samples it's a great way to uh, simplify sampling in locations that are hard to access or where it's harder to get people to so that's one of the goals or values of having the eDNA program so I'll show you usually either off of a shore or a dock or a boat just hang the filter off into the water <laughs> bit dry and you just disconnect everything put it back in this little bag and then we can write the information from the sample location the GPS coordinates and stuff like that on the bag and then uh, this comes back to our lab at the University of Alberta 
uh, where we'll extract the DNA off of the filter and then we use specific tests to analyze for different invasive species. From an invasive species perspective, that's exactly what you're trying to do is identify almost in a sort of a needle in a haystack kind of way that, that one piece of DNA that represents uh, an invasive species that you're interested in detecting. Um, on the other side of that though, we can also use environmental DNA for more um, biodiversity and e ecological purposes. And that, that fits more into potentially species at risk detection, or even just understanding more about the whole, um, the whole ecology of an aquatic ecosystem. So it's great because we can, from a single environmental DNA sample, like, like we collected on the boat, we can do both of those techniques. So we could say we need to look very specifically and sensitively for the priority invasive species. We could also use that same eDNA sample to say we want to know more about the fish community here and what are all the fish that comprise that community uh, or do we have species at risk in this e ecosystem and that that can be helpful information for us to think about ways in which we might control invasive species or understand the integrity of the ecosystem. Thanks to partnerships like these, Alberta is one of the few provinces in Canada without an established population of invasive mussels, but that could change fast. Whether you're pulling samples in the field or pulling your kayak out of the water, your actions matter.